stable isotopes are utilizing the idea that an isotope is just a variation of an element, right? So what we have is an element that has an extra neutron. So what that means is that the mass of the element has changed, but the overall identity and reactivity is the same. But what this means, having different masses of the same element, is that during phase changes and reactions, there tends to be a partitioning or a fractionation of that atom pool. We find that those with lower atomic masses tend to react faster. This has to do with the ability to make weaker and stronger bonds. So ultimately what we have is during reactions taking place, we can fractionate an atom pool and we can have one part of the substance, the original substance is usually enriched with a particular isotope or has the more massive version present. Whereas the substance that it's forming into, for example, you know, like evaporation, we will find that the vapor phase would be depleted with that isotope. When we talk about delta values, we're actually looking at the ratio of rare to common isotopes uh, to that of a standard, and it's reported as a delta value. So what's really interesting about boron is that with, with the other isotopes that we've talked about so far, it's usually about a 99 to maybe 98% difference of the common isotope to the rare isotope. But the rare isotope in some cases being a fraction of a percent of the total abundance of that particular element. When it comes to boron, it's a little different. Boron is nearly an 80 to 20% split. So I have this little pie chart here. And what it does is it opens up the ability to have a really wide range of boron isotopic values. And we can use those as a fingerprint to validate certain substances and their occurrence into the environment.